Hello and welcome to Strange Talk with Doc. I am your host, Doc. I hope that your day is going well. I want to start off real briefly by saying if you heard a commercial that led into this show that dealt with a pro-Trump ad or an anti-Biden ad, I have nothing to do with either one of those. Those are by the apps. They are not in any way, shape, or form. Am I giving them a thumbs up? agreeing with them, anything of that nature. How I vote is my personal preference. I am not allowing an ad that runs on a site that I have no control of because Strange Talk with Doc seems to be everywhere and I cannot control all the ads that run in front of the show. So I apologize. Do not take that as me selling out in any way, shape or fashion my views are my views. They remain the same. And if you have been listening, you know that I stand strongly for right. I am not for anything that is wrong. And that's why today I want to deal with a couple of things. I want to deal with gossip, rumors, innuendos, and a lack of integrity. How people are selling their souls for cheap. I mean, real cheap. And we'll get into that. And I'm going to do that in a in a way where I make sure of myself that I am not also spreading any rumors or gossip or anything like that. This is not what this is about. A young man in Wageskin, Illinois, Wakegan, I'm sorry, Wakegan, Illinois, Marcellus Stinetti, 19 year old, sitting in a car with his baby's mother, Tafara. Williams, he was shot dead and she's in the hospital fighting for her life. My heart goes out to the families of Mr. Stinetti, uh, Mrs. Williams. This is one time too many. This is ridiculous. This is outrageous. A 19 year old man and his girlfriend cannot sit in a car in America committing no crimes. This car was not reported stolen. There was no reason for the cops whatsoever to stop them to begin with. Then they claim that they sped off. And then the next cop who found them says that he tried, they tried to reverse into him, causing him damage. He was subsequently fired yesterday. Now, this is ridiculous. This is a 19 year old father whose life is gone. I mean, tearing up another family, tearing up another community. Every time we get a chance to take a break, something else comes back up on the scene. And this is ridiculous. Me personally, I am tired of it. I am so tired of it. I'm worn out. And it makes you angry. But what could you do? I mean, picket, riot, do rocks. I mean, we need a solution to these problems. We need somebody who really cares in places of power around the nation. I am talking about from police chiefs to congressmen, assemblymen, senators, presidents, and vice presidents who truly care about their constituents, all constituents, black, white, Hispanic, Asian. It does not make a difference, gay or straight. We need somebody who cares about the people. Okay, Mr. Anthony Chisholm, I'm going to say rest in peace to Mr. Anthony Chisholm. He died earlier this week at the age of 77. Most people are going to remember him for playing Bear Redding on the show from HBO Oz. He was a dramatic character. I love Bear. He was wild. He led the black gang. And then he gave them funky jaws. But if you know the show, you already know the story of Bear Redding. Uh I appreciated his work. I didn't see him on Broadway or anything like that, but I heard he was a phenomenal Broadway actor. I'd just like to say rest in peace to him. November 3rd is coming up, people. I want you to make sure that you have a plan, that you are prepared, and that you go out and vote. How you vote is on you. How your conscience lets you be led has got nothing to do with me. So in no way, shape, or form am I telling you who and what to vote for. I'm just saying, let your voice be counted. Do not say that you don't count. In no way, shape, or form should you ever say to yourself in any situations that your voice does not matter. I don't care if it's voting. I don't care 
if it's a uh, PTA, I don't care if it's local, national, you count. When you listen to something, you count. When you watch something, you count. When you read something, you count. You count, period. Even if you're a hateful person, you still count because there's something to be learned from your hate. So now COVID, we're up to 223,000 deaths in America. 8.4 million cases. Worldwide, 42 million cases and 1.2 million people dead. But this is a joke. This is a conspiracy. This is not real. So Colorado, Idaho, Indiana, Minneapolis, New Mexico, North Dakota, and West Virginia this week all had record numbers of new cases. But it's a joke once again. It's not real. Masks don't help. Social distancing shouldn't be uh, viewed as an option. You know, think about this. Several, several states are going to lose the protection against electricity, water, and gas being disconnected. These are people who are unemployed, and now they might also, on top of being unemployed, have no water, no gas, and no electricity. And they're hungry. And nobody, nobody, Democrats or Republicans alike, have done anything to help the general public. Okay, they gave some extra money for unemployment. But have they sent another stimulus? They dick around all the time telling you another stimulus is coming and no stimulus is anywhere around the corner. So it's ridiculous, ridiculous. Michael Oysterholm, he's the director of the Center of Infectious Disease and Policies at the University of Minnesota. He said the next six to 12 weeks are going to be the darkest of the pandemic. We have got to do what's right. I know the holidays is coming. No Thanksgiving is a big time that people want to spend with their family. They want to get together. They want to be around loved ones. They want to share that bird and watch that football. But we have to treat 2020 as an anomaly. It is a different year than you've ever lived in your entire life. And you can't handle it as business as usual. So be safe. Be careful. Watch out not just for yourself, but your family. Your friends, if you love them, protect them by doing what's right. New York was going to have a big issue. Some big rabbi there was going to hold a 10,000 person wedding. And luckily for New York City and the people of that Hasidic community, somebody ratted them out. So they had to finally decide to scale it down to only 100 people and do most of it viral. Like I said, I know people want to celebrate these massive events in their lives. I mean, birthdays are coming. You might be celebrating your 21st or 50th anniversary, but it's not normal, man. You have to deal with the consequences of being in an abnormal time. So we got this deal with China, where China is telling us that they're going to take American hostages, quote unquote, under this thing called the Hostage Diplomacy Act where if we don't release hostages, they will start taking hostages so that they have something to negotiate with. You know, big time politics is a dirty business, dirty, dirty business. So innocent people have to be played like actual chess pieces. Actually, they are human chess pieces in international dealings and international policies and how this is normal for countries to deal with each other, putting civilians in harm's way, I will never know. So we have this fool, right? Vernon, J they, Vernon Jones, he's a Republican state senator from the state of Georgia. He goes to a Trump rally, and this dude decides he's going to crowd surf or wear no mask. Well, obviously, it's been a couple of days, and I haven't heard anything about him catching the virus, luckily for him and his family, but the optics of what he did made no sense at all. I understand he was excited to be speaking at a presidential rally, and that's a big deal. You know, there was a time when the president's office was like, you know, that was the height of the heights. If you met the president or you went to the White House, it was a humongous thing. But you know what? Once again, it's a different day. 
So we having a lot of problems with voting, right? And several states have got these fake claims of people claiming to be the Proud Boys sending these threatening letters like, we know who you are and we're going to come get you if you don't vote Republican. Don't get caught up in that bullshit. Vote your heart. Vote your mind. Do not be intimidated. Do not be scared to go to a poll. If you got to go with friends or nephew or uncle or aunt, whatever, you take your ass to the poll. Your voice needs to be heard. Okay? So the University of Alabama State, Alabama State University, they have decided to remove the name of this Bib Graves, who happened to be the Alabama governor in 1928. And he also was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. He was the charter member of the Ku Klux Klan. How the fuck did Alabama State, a HBCU, not know since 1928 that this vile creature's name was on one of their halls, a dormitory? And why were they then fighting for the last 75 years to have this man's name we're talking almost 90 years to have this man's name removed from the buildings. This is a disgrace. I mean, somebody had to do their due diligence and say, who is Bib Graves? All the students that came through there, somebody had to know. And this should have been something that they'd have been fighting about since the civil rights movement. It should have been on their books every year. Every year they should have been making noise. Whoever was notable Alumni from Alabama State University should have made it their business to speak to the general public and say, we need to have this man's name removed from our dormitory. And I'm hoping that there are no other HBCUs that have known racist buildings named after these people. Okay. So we had the presidential, the final presidential debates, and I'm not going to jive you. I did not watch it. It was not of any interest to me. My mind is kind of made up. I didn't want to see the nonsense. Even though they said Christian Welker did a fantastic job as the moderator, I'm going to trust that they did, and I'm going to just leave that alone. So Pope Francis has made another remark about the homosexual people of the world, and he claims that they are children of God and they have the right to be in the family. You know, Pope Francis, this is the second time I'm going to say thumbs up to you because they are human beings. They bleed like we do. They breathe like we do. They live where we live. They are our family. They are our co-workers. They are members of the church. And you know what? It's time that we stop discriminating against people because of who they love. Now, Okay, now this kind of gets to the point of the gossip, the rumors, and innuendos. There's this young lady out there named Jack Raw Wright. Jack Raw Wright. Now, I am not going to make a disparaging remark about Miss Wright. I do not know Miss Wright. I do not know anything about her, but I've been, been flooded on my YouTube by Miss Jack Raw Wright and her talking about other people. Now, it made me interested in who this woman is. So I decided not only was I going to figure out a way on YouTube to ban anything that she said from, or any videos that she were a part of from being on my site, but I wanted to know who and what she was about. So I decided to find out. And when I found out that she was a musician, she's a singer, I said, I will research her music. I will leave out the rumors. I will leave out the gossip because that's not a world I live in. It's not something that I want to touch. And I found out that she's a very talented singer. She's singing some serious Philly soul. I mean, the two albums she had seem to be from a few years back. And it's very grown up music. It's very, I mean, something that she could be very proud of. It's not really my style. I'm not a Jill Scott a uh, flow tree, Philly vibe or Philly soul kind of fan. But as far as a musician and a singer, the talent is there. The other stuff I stay away from and I'm not going to touch it because me personally, I don't believe in spreading rumors. I don't believe in gossip. 
If you have no nothing concrete to sink your feet in, I think you should leave it alone. I don't care who's dating who. I don't care who wore what. I don't care of taking one thing in somebody's life and making that the biggest thing in somebody's life. I think that we have bigger fish to fry than to worry about who's Illuminati, who's drinking baby blood. I mean, I don't need that bullshit. And I don't touch that bullshit. I don't bother with that. I don't care what one man slept with another man to get where he got. If they were consenting adults, what business is it of mine? So I leave stuff like that alone. But some people, anything for a light, anything for a check, anything for a click. And I don't live in that world. I don't want to live in that world because my soul is too expensive. I have to answer for the things that I say and the things that I do on this planet, maybe one day. And maybe that's false. But I want to be prepared. I, I believe that you should be ready so you don't have to get ready. And when I leave this earth, I want to have been ready. I want to have been righteous as I could possibly be. I want to do the right thing. I want to say the right thing. Even when nobody is judging me. Even when nobody is evaluating me. Even when nobody is forcing me to do it. I think that's where your integrity comes from. When you do the right thing, when nobody is watching. And that's my plan. Strange Talk with Doc is always going to remain that way. If somebody came on this show, joined me on this show, and they started gossiping and spreading rumors about anybody, I'm cutting them off. And we're moving on. Okay. So one thing, I took last week off, so it gave me a chance to listen to a lot of music. Now, I'm not going to go in depth about all the songs that I heard, but I'm just going to give you a brief overview. Patti Smite, the ex-lead singer of Scandal, she came out with an album called It's About Time. It's a killer album, people. I would say go out if you get the opportunity to check this album out. Patti Smite laid down what I consider to be one of the albums of the year. There was some fantastic songs on it. Uh, songs like Drive, I'm Gonna Get There, Losing Things, No One Gets What They Want. And she redid Downtown Train. Beautiful album. Joyner Lucas also came out with an album called Evolution. This album was also fantastic. There's some great songs on there. He did one of those uh, songs that he seems to be a master at doing where he does both sides of the fence. And the name of that song is called Snitch. Also in my albums of the year. Tech 9 dropped an album called Exodus. Exodus. A very fantastic album. A lot of good songs. There's only eight tracks on it. But most of them are banging. So I think Tech 9 is also in my albums of the year. Now YG dropped his album. And it was called My Life 400. There were a few songs on there. This is not what I consider to be a great album. He only had three songs that I think were worth a damn. One was called Out on Bail. The other one was FTP, which is Fuck the Police. And the other song is Jealous. It was a decent album, I guess, for him, but it's not really my style. Exhibit Be Real and Demerick came out with an album called Serial Killers Presents the Summer of Sam. Fantastic album. Great album. I, I'd i say go out. If you have not heard it, please give the album a, a listen. It is worth your time and energy. Black Thought released his album, Streams of Thought, Volume 3, Cain and Abel. Fantastic album. Front to back, almost every track on there is killer. Black Thought brought the funk. I appreciate it. I really, really enjoyed this album. It's in my albums of the year. Tears of Fears re released The Seeds of Love, their super deluxe edition of their greatest hits. I would say if you're a fan of Tears for Fears, to hear different mixes and remakes of classics was well worth it. Aloe Black put down an album called All Love Everything. Wasn't a huge Aloe Black fan beforehand, I'm a huge Aloe Black fan today. This was a great album. I Do is going to be a wedding song that's going to be played for decades. So 
uh, you know, what he killed with that. Bruce Springsteen also put out an album called Letters to You. This was classic Bruce. He aged well. The music was good. The band is still tight. I got nothing but positive things to say about Bruce Springsteen and his Letters to You. It's a very good album. Now, like I said, I would uh, you should listen to it. Shade also came out with her greatest hits. It's called, I believe, Up to Now. And Up to Now is just a collection of her greatest hits. I really got back into listening to Sade lately, and I actually didn't realize how much I enjoyed Sade's music till recently. And so this was a good box set. It's everything. If you just want to get into Sade, you give it a listen, and you will hear Basically, up to now, everything she's put out. Stevie Wonder dropped two songs this week. One is called Where's Our Love? And the other one is Can't Put It in your, in the Hands of Fate. Now, I wasn't expecting anything from this. I haven't heard from Stevie in a long time. I didn't know if Stevie had anything in the tank. And if this is an indication, Stevie's tank is full, people. I mean, he went back into a time machine and brought back Musicarium Hotter than July. I mean, he put Buster Rhymes is on one song. Gary Clark Jr. is on another song. Rhapsody's on the song. I mean, these two are killers. Pearl Jam also released a single called Get It Back. I love Pearl Jam. If you know anything about Doc and Strange Talk with Doc, you've heard me talk, preach about Pearl Jam a lot. Pearl Jam never disappoints me. And I can't wait for another album like Gigaton. Gigaton was fantastic. Now, about two weeks ago, Saturday Night Live had Jack White come on the show. Jack White came on, and this was 10 10 2020, so it was two weeks ago. Jack White tore that stage a new ass, and it made me go back and listen to everything that Jack White has done, and I underappreciated his talents. I, the White Stripes were better than I gave them credit for, and now I'm going to consider myself Johnny Cump lately, but a big fan of Jack White and the White Stripes. I finished off The Office. The Office was fantastic. The last season, not as good as the other seasons. I can't really give anything away if you're not an Office fan because there was a big, a big departure on the show, and that big departure did change some dynamics. But The Office is, if you still binge watching something and you have not gotten to a point where you found something good, this is a good comedy. This is a feel-good show about some lunatics. It's gonna, you're going to enjoy yourself watching it. Lovecraft Country finished up this season. And I really appreciated Lovecraft Country. Jordan Peele put in some good work. The actors on the show gave it their all. The storyline is not something I would normally watch, like sci-fi monsters, but it was enjoyable. It was only 10 episodes, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm like, I'm caught up now with Fargo. I didn't watch the first three seasons of Fargo. And this is Fargo season four. This is the one featuring Chris Rock and the gangsters and they in Kansas City. And I hate the fact that I actually have to go episodic and watch this thing week to week. Because normally I catch shows after they've already aired. This way I can marathon them. But this was one of those particular times where I actually had to sit back and go week to week like every other person. And so far, so good. I, I, I'm not disappointed in Chris Rock's acting. I'm not disappointed in the storyline. Uh, I, I don't know Fargo from the first three seasons and maybe things that are happening in season four intertwine with three, two, and one. And I don't know and I don't care because as a standalone, I think that you can jump in season four and be quite fine. Now, I watched Barat 2 yesterday. And you know what? <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen put in a funny movie. It's a funny movie. It makes no sense as Barat does. Uh, he's crazy. So you expect crazy things. But entertaining, I will say. So I give this movie two thumbs up. Now coming out later this week, we're going to have two new albums. Elvis Costello, Hey Clockface. And Sam Smith, Love Goes, both are dropping on October 30th. I just wanted to put that buzz in your ear. Uh, so we got two new albums to look forward to this week. We have the Zolo Championships. 
And for those who don't know, Zolo is a brand new, basically, tournament. It was the first year was last year. Tiger Woods won. Tiger Woods is playing like garbage, complete garbage. He's near the bottom. He can't keep taking off time and think that he can step out on these golf courses and compete at a high level with these people who are competing all the time. So if you're a fan of golf, you do have golf this weekend. There's no cut. Everybody makes the cut because it's a very small field, and it should be enjoyable. Justin Thomas is killing. He's one of my favorite golfers. And the World Series is on. We up to game number three, and right now the Dodgers are up 2-1 to one over Tampa Bay Rays. I picked the Dodgers to win this. I thought the Dodgers have a better team, but... That being said, anything can happen in the next four games. Anything can happen. Tampa Bay is no bums, but the Dodgers have got good pitching. They've got good hitting. They seem to be a tight, tightly run unit. Last week we had UFC. It was uh, Brian Ortega versus uh, the Korean Zombie. I'm going to say that was one of the less exciting cards from Fight Island that I've seen. Something just wasn't right about the whole entire card. I did not enjoy it, and I usually enjoy it. But today on Fight Island, we got Khalib Namagomedov. He's going up against Justin Gagey. Robert Whitaker is going up against Jared Cannonier. Alexander Volkov is fighting Walt Harris. Steven Sprude is fighting Tia Tolava. And Magomed Askalov is fighting Eon Kalabani. Now, the first prelims start at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So during the day, on ESPN2, you got the UFC. If you got nothing else that you want to watch, you're not into college football, you do have a UFC prelim on free TV at two o'clock, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And then at 2 o'clock, the main card starts. So we have a special time for UFC from Fight Island with a big main event. Magomedov versus Gagey for the title. So I'm super excited about that. And I'll talk about this card more Monday after this happened. We'll review what we've seen. So Thursday, the Giants played the Eagles and they lost 22 to 21. The NFC lease is an embarrassment. They really are. And you know what? Daniel Jones took that fall that, every, you know, the fall hurt around football. But the man is not a running back. He's not used to running that long a distance. And so what? He's a meme. He's a, a, a gif or whatever you want to be. But you know what? He showed that he got some ability to move the ball. Not a great quarterback, but some good ability to move the ball. So uh, the bye teams this week is the Ravens, the Colts, the Dolphins, and the Vikings. Those are your bye week teams. Pittsburgh, undefeated, is playing the Tennessee Titans, who are also undefeated. I'm going to actually pick the Titans to win this game. I trust their running game more than I trust the Steelers and Connor. The quarterbacks, I think, are going to be a wash. The receivers and the defense are both tight on both. They're both well-coached team, but I'm taking the Tennessee Titans in Tennessee because of Henry. Okay, the Green Bay Packers are playing the Houston Texans in Houston. I'm going to pick the Panthers. I think the uh, Packers have to have a bounce back. The Detroit Lions are playing the Falcons. The Falcons have proven that they can score points, but I don't trust the Falcons. So I'm going to take the Lions on the road to win. The Buffalo Bills are playing the New York Jets. The Jets are an abomination to anything called football. I'm going to take the Bills to beat the Jets in uh, Jersey. Cleveland Browns are playing the Cincinnati Bengals. I got to go with the Browns. Uh, now we're going to have to deal with a week of Baker Mayfield acting all arrogant. But I like Joe Barrow, but I just don't think that he has a lot of weapons. So I'm going to stick with the Browns. The Carolina Panthers are playing the Saints. And the Saints are without Samuel Sanders, Emmanuel Sanders. They're without Michael Thomas, which means it's just Drew Brees and basically Kamara. Uh, Carolina Panthers, if they can keep this a low-scoring game, they might have a chance to win this game. But 
my mind over my heart. My mind says that you got to go with the better franchise right now, which would be the Saints, especially since they're home. The Los Angeles Chargers are playing the Miami Dolphins. Two, Tua Tavalova first start. I'm not going to trust the rookie in his first start against the Chargers. I think the Chargers, who also have a rookie quarterback, but he's been out there three, four weeks, so I'm going to go with the Chargers. The Seahawks are playing Arizona Cardinals. I got to go with the Seahawks to remain undefeated. I am not impressed with the offense on the Cardinals. They have not impressed me as of yet. It seems like there's been a little regression in Murray, and he's not hitting uh, Fitzgerald at all. Fitzgerald seems to be really at the end of his career, and Hopkins is Hopkins. Come on, man. Hopkins is Ho Hopkins. Why the Texans ever got rid of him, I will always be uh, in amazement by. The Kansas City Chiefs are playing the Denver Broncos. It's an interdivision rivalry game, but the Chiefs just got too much firepower for Denver Broncos, and uh, Locke is in for a long day. San Francisco 49ers with Garofalo is going up against his former coach, Bill Belichick, and the New England Patriots. In New England, I believe the Patriots will have enough firepower to actually win this game. They should have a good game plan. Bill should know the ins and outs of Garofalo. As long as they can stop the running game of the 49ers and the Patriots have a pretty good defense, I expect them to win. The Dallas Cowboys played at Washington football team. The Cowboys should bounce back. If the Red Rifle cannot beat Washington then he is worse than we think. Andy Dalton has got to be able to beat this team. Zeke Elliott has to be able to run pretty well. Even though Washington doesn't have the worst defense, I don't think there's any way that they win this game. The Sunday night game, you got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going to Las Vegas to play the Raiders. And as you know, as of today, Antonio Brown signed with the Bucs. Now, he cannot play for a couple of weeks, and he's got to go through the COVID and all that. But they just added another weapon for Brady. And I believe that the Bucks, with their defense, should be able to beat the Raiders. So I'm picking the Bucks to win this. And the Monday night game is going to be the Chicago Bears versus the Los Angeles Rams. I think the Rams hold suit at home. I just think that they're a better football team. I think that they... Uh, the Bears have not proven anything to me other than that they are tough. They're grind them out kind of team. Folks is not the worst quarterback, but there's nothing exciting about them. And the Rams do have the ability to explode somewhat with the receivers they have and golf. But they haven't put up a lot of points. So I have to just go with the home team here. And once again, I just want to reiterate, watch yourself. When it comes to gossip, rumors, and those innuendos, be it about co-workers, be it about celebrities, be it about family members, be it about neighbors. You don't want to get caught up in a world where that is your world because what you say about other people behind their back, other people will say things behind your back. You leave yourself open to slings and arrows if you do that because what a person says to you, see, you have to remember one thing. When a person feels comfortable enough to spread rumors to you, what does that say about you to other people? Why you? You a willing ear? So don't be a party to it. Don't be a party to speaking it. Don't be a party to listening to it. We have to learn to cut some nonsense out of our lives. And I hope that I have done it in any way, shape, or form, added to any rumor mill, that any way, shape, or form that I've added to any gossip. And if I have, call me out on it. Please call me out on it. Go to my website. Go to social media. I don't mind being corrected because if I'm corrected, then I won't repeat it. I promise you, I won't repeat the same mistake over and over again. This has been Strange Talk with Doc, and I appreciate you, and I would love for you to subscribe, comment, share, pass this on. Please, most important to me is comments. I like to hear back, feedback, what you like, what you don't like, what you like me to 
talk more about what you like me to leave alone. And I will listen to you. I have no problem with that. But I appreciate your support up until now. I really do. And I'm going to tell you, like I tell you each and every time, people, peace to you and peace to yours. And I'll be back Monday with a weekend wrap-up show right here on Strange Talk with Doc. Once again, peace.